Hello, family. I want to talk about narcissistic parents and how narcissistic parents can live vicariously through their children. Let's talk about it. So narcissistic parents, they see their children as extensions of themselves. They do not see their children as their own individual person. They do not see their child as having their own life with their own mission. No, narcissistic parents look at their children as this is my child, this is my property, and I can control what I do with this child because this is my child. Narcissistic parents look at children as property, while normal loving parents look at their children as people. Oh, come on, spirit. Let's let's let me say that one more time. Narcissistic parents view their children as property, while loving parents view their children as people. When you view a person as a person, you know that they have feelings, that they have emotions, that they are human, and they deserve to be treated as such. But when you view a property, you feel as if they're not, that property isn't human, that property doesn't have emotions, that property doesn't have feelings. It's almost as if they look at their children as if their children are robotic, as if this is just another vessel that is here to fulfill whatever needs, wants, and desires of the parent. What the parent, what the narcissistic parent will do is if they had something that they did not, <clears throat> that they did not fulfill when they were a child or adolescent or teen, they, the narcissistic parent will then force their child into an activity, sport, extracurricular, etc. that the parent wanted to be involved in but didn't get the opportunity to. So in order to live the experience through second hand, the parent is going to put their child in the experience at first hand. You know, if it's kind of like the cliche of when you watch like a Disney movie or a Lifetime movie or like a like, or like a Hallmark movie or whatever, and you know, there's a parent that's like forcing their child into some type of sport, and the the parent is so abdomen and persistent on the child completing this task and sticking with it, and then when the child says, "I don't want to do this anymore," and then the parent goes, "Oh, but son." daughter you're giving up your dream and then the son or daughter will say no mom no dad i'm giving up your dream as sappy as that kind of seems when we watch that like on a um like on a movie or something <clears throat> that's real life that's reality that's exactly what those narcissistic parents do and it's like that is what the child of a narcissistic parent would love to say to their parent. Like, I don't want to do this. It's because you want me to do this. But why should I have to be involved in something and waste years of my life fulfilling something that I don't even have a passion for? When the narcissistic parent wants to live vicariously through their child, they ha they are depriving their child of years of their life, moments in their childhood they, that they will never get back doing something and being involved in something, spending their time, spending their energy in something that the child doesn't even really want to do. But because the child is a child, they're a minor, they have to listen to their parents and the parents force them into things. That is how narcissistic parents pull that control move. They think, well, I'm the parent, I'm in control, I'm in charge, and I'm saying you're doing it. And then when the child goes to the narcissistic parent like, hey, mom, dad, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't have a passion for it. I want to quit. I want to leave. And then the narcissistic parent will say, well, no, I want you to stick it out because you, like, they'll basically give you some random excuse. It's a lame excuse that they give, but whole time was really happening 
is the narcissistic parent is looking at the situation like, if my child quits this activity, then that means that I won't be fulfilled. I'm not going to get the experience that I want. And I don't want that. I'm not ready to give this up. So no, I'm going to make them stay in it. <clears throat> and what can happen is when the child grows older and they look back on their life and they look back on those years when they finally start to just self-reflect and mature, the child will eventually, as an adult, look back at their childhood and realize wow, I really wish I could go back in time and change that because I realized that I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do this sport or activity. It's because my parents wanted me to. And then when they think of how they even ask their parent, could they quit, could they leave, and the parent wouldn't let them, then it's like, why would my parents keep me in something just because, like, why would my parent keep me in something after I told them I didn't want to do it? And the child can get to gaslighting themselves like, well, maybe I needed to stick with it. Maybe it was because of this. No, that's utter bull crap. The child has their own life. And what happens is it takes a child. It, okay. I'm sorry. I'm collecting my thoughts. How can the child learn their own interests, learn their own hobbies, figure out what they want to do with their life, figure out who they want to be, figure out who they are if they can't be involved in things that they actually want to do? When a child is old enough to express themselves, when a child knows what they like and what their interests are, allow the child to in, engage and indulge in activities or in sports that they have an interest in because they will thrive. They will feel more confident. They will feel good. But the narcissistic parent, when they keep their child involved in certain activities and they make them stick with it, like making a child do something all four years of high school and the child was barely able to do anything else. They just deprive their child of a regular high school experience because the parent was being selfish. And then the parent will turn around and say, well, you need to figure out what you want to do with your life. How can they when you didn't give them the opportunity? And also, also the parent will keep the child in those sports and activities despite how the child is being treated, despite the child's experience. Like the child can, <clears throat> like let's say a child is involved in some type of sport or activity and they are getting bullied. They're getting picked on by their, you know, by their peers. And they're not really having a good time. They go to this place and they're picked on, they're put down, they're mistreated. People are just so cruel and mean to them and they're not having a good time. So one, they're, they're not, they're there and they don't even want to be there. They don't have a passion for it. And then to add insult to injury, they are being picked on. Why would a child want, a child would not want to do that anymore. And then when the child goes to their narcissistic parent and says, hey, mom, dad, I want to I want to quit this because these people are picking on me. They're mean. I don't want to be involved in this anymore. Then what the parent will do is the parent will disregard the child's feelings, not even care about their experience. And they'll make an excuse and say, oh, well, that's not a good enough reason to leave. You need to stay in it because it's going to help you build character. No, parents, you are Failing your children when you do this, let me tell you. I don't have to be a parent to know this because I was the child that went through this and this is exactly how I feel. My parents failed me. So to any parent listening to this right now that says, you're not, don't gaslight me because you feel convicted because you know you did the very same thing that I'm speaking about to your children. You don't like the hot seat, well too bad. Sit in it. Anyway. What happens is that a child, a parent can fail their child when they keep their child involved in situations where they are being bullied and picked on because that is trauma. We have to recognize that bullying is abuse. If you are putting your child into a situation where they are being abused verbally, emotionally, psychologically, physically even, or even sexually even, trigger warning, you are failing your children because you are not protecting them. 
the if the child had already been going through some stuff pull the child out of something so that they can have their peace so that they can figure out what they want to do parents have to understand that their child is not put here on this earth so that the parent can relive their childhood years and do all the things that they didn't get a chance to do through their child. That's living vicariously through your child. That's wrong. And when the child grows up and they become an adult and they look back, they're going to have so much resentment towards their parents because they're going to look back and compare and think and look back at their high school years and realize what they missed out on or look at, the, at their middle school adolescent years realize what they missed out on realize that the and reality is going to hit that child as an adult it's going to be it's going to hit them and they're going to realize no matter how much i want to no matter how much i like i no matter what i do I cannot get those years back because the past is in the past. I can't go back in time. I have to accept the fact that this happened and I have to live with it. And having to face that reality and live with that is a very tough pill to swallow. And this is why adult children can harbor such resentment towards their parents because they're like, my parents failed me. My parents didn't listen to me. My parents put their wants and needs before mine. And what's difficult is that when the child is involved in activities that the parent wants them to be in, the child does not have an opportunity to be autonomous. They do not have an opportunity to be independent. They do not have the opportunity to learn themselves, to figure out what they like, what they want to do. Because when you involve yourself with certain hobbies and interests that you enjoy, you grow as a person. You get more confident within yourself. You get more grounded within yourself. So how can the child grow into who they need to be if they are involved in certain activities that they don't even want to be a part of? How can they? That's why it's so important to my, to my people right now that are listening to this and you have had your parents live vicariously through you. You understand exactly what I'm saying right now because you walked this experience. Your parents forced you into activities that you didn't want to be in. They deprived your adolescent years. They took away your adolescent years, which is pivotal for your development. They took that away from you and forced you into something. And now you can't get those years back. And now reality is setting in and you're wondering, how can I heal from this? The first part of healing this baby is acceptance. Accepting the reality for what it is, once you can swallow that pill, everything else afterwards becomes easier. The next thing you have to do is you have to communicate with yourself how you truly feel. You have to be real with yourself. Have a conversation with yourself and allow yourself to let out all of your emotion about how you feel. No matter what the emotion is, make it real. Are you angry? Are you upset? Are you frustrated? Are you disappointed? All of those feelings are valid. And your feelings deserve to be validated and deserve to be expressed. So you have to have that conversation with yourself and say, yes, mommy, daddy made me do this and it made me mad. And I'm mad because of this. I'm upset because of this. Go ahead and allow your feelings to come to the surface. Let it out. Let that inner teen come out and express exactly what they feel. Give your inner child the voice that they did not have when you were a child. Your adult self can give your inner child, your inner teen, that voice that, they, that was taken from them. I guarantee you, that when you are upfront and honest with yourself about how you feel, you're going to feel a sense of relief. You're going to feel so much better because you got it off of your chest. You said what was on your heart. You released that burden that you were carrying on your shoulders. And listen, baby, the first person that you need to have that conversation with is yourself. Talk to yourself. 
please, everybody talks to themselves. Don't act like you don't. Please, I'm proud to admit that I talk to myself more than I talk to people. Bro, I have a whole video in my reels talking about it's quite normal to talk to yourself. Like I was in the zone and I just hit record to, to show people that it's okay to talk to yourself. Bro, I be having whole monologues with myself, having meetings with myself. And then somebody will come in the room and I'm just like, you're interrupting me. I'm thinking this in my head like, hey, you're interrupting my meeting. And they're like, who are you talking to? Myself. Please go away. Bro, the best conversations that you can have are with yourself. <laughs> Hear me when I say that. The best conversations you can ever have are with yourself. We spend all like we spend the majority of our days of our life with ourselves so we have to talk to ourselves we have to allow those feelings to come out because your inner team your inner child <clears throat> needs to let out what they have been feeling they need to release what's been what's been suppressed that built up anger that that built up fr frustration they need to release it that's the second thing to do so the first thing is acceptance. The second thing is to ha communicate with yourself how you feel, everything that you feel, and don't hold anything back. Don't hold anything back. You be as blunt as you need to with yourself. The third thing that you have to do is have a conversation with your parents and express your truth to them. This is not... You're, you expressing your truth is not you saying, mom, dad, I want you to build a time machine and go back in time and redo what happened. No, that's not the case because that's what emotionally immature parents may think you want. No. You basically got to say, like, mom, dad, listen, I want to express my truth to you. This is what I feel. And tell them how you feel because your parents cannot run from their accountability. They cannot run from the hurt and pain that they have caused you. When they decided to be parents, when they decided to continue with the pregnancy, when they decided to bring you into this world, they, that came with the price. That came with the responsibility. And it's that you're probably going to mess up with your kids. That's inevitable. But if you mess up with your kids, you better be woman enough or man enough to sit there and listen to what your children have to say. Because listen, if you were woman enough and man enough to lay down and have that child, woman enough and man enough to control that child when they were a minor, then baby, you better be woman enough or man enough to sit there and listen to your child as an adult tell you how they feel. <laughs> And this ain't like, oh, your child is trying to check you or tell you about they tell you about yourself. No, this is your child expressing their truth. You can't gaslight your child's truth. If that's their truth, that is their truth. Although the parent may have seen it differently because they were very selfish, they were self-serving, they didn't care about the child's well-being at the time. They only care about satisfying their own needs. So now what has to happen is the truth is the, the truth is coming out. What's done in the dark will always come to the light. It doesn't matter how long, how, it doesn't matter how many years go on, that child is gonna one day come back to their parent and tell them how they feel. And I want you, when you have that conversation with your child, hold nothing back, say everything that you feel because they have to feel it they have to learn and they have to know that their selfish decisions that they made in the past had long-term effects on their child and they have to self-reflect and realize wow just because I'm a parent doesn't mean that I have to control my child and they have to sit with that they have to live with that they have to live with that Next, the next thing that you can do in the part of your healing process is to take your power back, take your life back, take back control over your life. Because let me tell you, once you hit the age of 18, your parents are no longer, you are no longer obligated to do what your parents tell you to do. You are no longer obligated to live a life that your parents want you to live because you are legally an adult. I mean, listen, at, at the age of 18, if you commit a crime, you will be tried, trialed, excuse me, you will be trialed as an adult. 
So you are an adult by society standards, by the government standards, you are an adult. So an adult doesn't have to listen to what their parents tell them. Then by the time you reach the age of 21, baby, you are fully legal, fully legal. By the time you reach 25, you are a certified adult. You're even more grown. So take your power back. Take your life back. Take back control over your life. Tell your parents no. If your parents are saying, well, why don't you do this? Maybe you should do that. No. Well, why not? Because I don't want to. No, and because I don't want to is a very powerful thing. And I want you to say this with me right now. Repeat after me. No. Because I don't want to. I hope you said that. I hope you practice saying no. Well, why? Because I don't want to. Because first of all, family, no is a complete sentence. No, period. That's a complete sentence. You do not have to explain yourself to anybody. However, if they want you to explain yourself, don't go into vivid details because they're probably not going to want to hear or listen to those details because, no. Keep it short, sweet, and to the point and say, because I don't want to. And that is more of enough of a reason. You do not have to do anything that you don't want to. And as a child, you may not have had a choice. You didn't have that option. But now as an adult, you have that choice. You have that option. You taking your life back, you taking your power back, you saying, I'm not doing this because I don't want to. You are now advocating for yourself. You have to learn how to advocate for yourself. You have to learn how to speak up for yourself and vocalize what you need, vocalize what you want, and vocalize what you don't want. Vocalize what you don't need. Because that is going to be something that you have to learn in life going forward. Because if you still, if you don't outgrow that mindset of, like if you are still programming the mindset where you are obligated to do things that you don't want to do just because someone's forcing you to, you are going to hurt yourself in the process. You're going to cause yourself pain. You're going to cause yourself trauma, you're going to self-sabotage, you're going to cause yourself to be put in very unpleasant situations by you putting other people's needs and wants before your own. Your needs come first. Your wants come first. Not the wants and needs of another person because when you have to put your parents' needs before your own, you can go into friendships or relationships where you're putting their needs before your own. Or you can just run into random people, run into predatory people that can see the vulnerability in you and they can take advantage of that situation, of that opportunity. This person has la- like has weak boundaries. Let me go ahead and cross them and overstep them and really overpower them to make myself feel good. You don't want to have those people come across into your life because the stuff that they can do to you will cause you trauma that can scar you for years. You don't want that. You don't want that. So what you do want is you want to set strong and firm boundaries. So you have to start setting them with yourself and saying, I'm not doing this because I don't want to. And that goes with anything. Like if your parent says, hey, why don't you come over here for the holidays? And if you don't want to go say, no, I'm not going because I don't want to. It's around the holiday season as I'm recording this. Today is December 15th. We're entering the holiday season, you know. But, or if your parent asks you to do a favor, hey, can you come do this? Or hey, can you come help me with this? No, because I don't want to. Your parents for the longest time thought that they had so much power and control over you that at their beck and call, you would do anything for them. They are sadly mistaken. They are wrong. EQ, I don't know how to say wrong in Spanish. I was trying to say it, but yeah, I'm not even gonna try it. (laughs) But anyway, um, they are wrong for thinking that they can hold full control over you because you are not their property. You are their child and you and a child is a person, not a robot, not an object. And when you have been treated like an object throughout your life, throughout your childhood, you are more susceptible to attracting people into your life that will treat you and use you like you are an object. 
That's why children of narcissistic parents are more prone to experience domestic violence or experience sexual assault because they have not learned how to set proper boundaries with themselves. They have been comfortable in chaos. Now listen, there could be people that are have come from loving families that can get into a relationship and still experience domestic violence, or they can come from a loving family and they could still loving parents and they could still experience sexual assault. It can happen to anybody, let's be real. However, if you look at the likelihood of, if you look at the percentage, everything just breaks down into numbers. If you look at the percentage of, you know, of people that have experienced domestic violence or sexual assault, the, the numbers are higher if they have narcissistic parents than if they did not. Because there is a common denominator. There was a lack of boundaries within the child that was raised by narcissists and there was a lack of self-esteem. When a child is raised in an environment where they had to, they were obligated to do something that they didn't wanna do, that has programmed the child to think that that is normal. So they will go into situations and respond in a certain way based off of what they are used to. So we have to really recognize that the way that your parents treated you and how they hated you plays such a huge role in what happens in adulthood. And this is why we have to come out and we have to speak about it because these narcissistic parents, they have their heads so far up their derriere that they don't see how wrong they are. They don't see the aftermath. They don't see the long-term effects that it has on the child. They may see the child being rebellious or they may see the child just getting just very snippet or short with their parents and they have no idea where that energy is coming from, but it stemmed from a lot of built-up resentment that the child has towards the parent because of what happened in their childhood. And especially when that child gets to healing themselves and they're looking back at their life and they're starting to see things from a totally different perspective, it's really gonna take a toll on that child. And when they become an adult, it's, it's like all gonna come to the surface. It's like, oh, you can be 25 thinking about your high school years and all of a sudden your inner teen is coming out at your parent. And the parent is like, you're a grown woman, why are you acting like this? Because their inner child is, is upset. Their inner child is angry. Their inner child is mad. And they didn't get a chance to express their emotion. They didn't get a chance to... They did not get a chance to feel their feelings. They did not get a chance to express themselves. They did not have a voice because the parent took away their voice. But now as an adult, you better use your voice, baby. I want you to use your voice. I encourage you to use your voice. I am the person, I am your cheerleader and I'm pushing you and I'm saying, baby, I am patting you on the back right now. Like, baby, you got it. Use your voice. Use that beautiful voice of yours. Use that strong voice of yours. Use that confident voice of yours and speak your truth of what has happened to you and how it made you feel and how it has affected you. Speak your truth. Even if your voice shakes, speak your truth. Don't worry about how it's gonna make your parents feel because they did not care about how you were feeling when you were going through all of this. Sometimes your nar these narcissistic parents have to really get a taste of their own medicine. They have to see this energy mirrored back to them so that they can see how corrupt it is. Now, why did the parent live vicariously through their child? Because the parent is selfish. Because the parent thinks that because this is my child, I can control them. The narcissistic parents are controlling. They only want to have the child involved in things that they approve of. And if they don't approve it, they're not going to support it. They want to be in full control. They also think of things that are going to make them look good, what's going to help their image. So that's why they put their child in certain things just to boost up their image, just to boost up their ego. And also because the parent looks at this as an opportunity to take advantage of a situation. Narcissistic people love to take advantage of people, even their own children. And they'll look at the situation and be like, you know what? I have an opportunity to take advantage of this situation completely. 
I could force my child into this activity and then I could be the parent that's always there, that's involved and, and so involved in this activity and everybody sees me, I'm that parent. But whole time the parent is there because they are the ones that really wanna be a part of that program. Because the parent is so selfish where they're like, you know what, I wanna be a part of this, so I'm gonna use my child to be a part of this. Your narcissistic people are users. Your parents are users. Your parents used you to fulfill their own needs. You have to face the reality, baby. Your parents used you. And it's wrong. So now you have to take your power back. Now you have to say, I'm not doing what you want me to do anymore. Because you stole years of my childhood that I will never get back. And I am not allow about to allow you to take away any more years of my adulthood. And as I close this message, because I have ran out of things to say, I think I've let out everything I wanted to express here. I'm very, very sorry. Allow me to give you the apology that you didn't receive. And this is to myself as well. Baby, I am very, very sorry that you had to go through that. I'm so sorry that your parents took away your childhood years, deprived you of a normal childhood, deprived you of a normal high school experience or a middle school experience because they forced you into activities that you didn't want to be a part of. I'm sorry that your parents didn't listen to you and give you what you needed. I'm sorry that your parents didn't allow you to quit or leave when you wanted to. I'm sorry that you were forced into something that you didn't want to do. I'm sorry that you had to waste all of that time and energy into something that you didn't even have a passion for. I'm sorry that you cannot get those years back. I'm so sorry, baby. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because the rest of your life, you're going to do exactly what you want to do. And you're going to do what's going to make you happy. You're going to do what makes you feel fulfilled. And life is going to get so much better for you. Life is going to feel blissful for you. Take all of this pain that you have and turn it into power. Use it into something that you love to do. Turn that into wisdom. Invest that pain that you have into something creative. Because all of that pain was to give you power. Now you have to find a way to put that power into something. You put that power into something, whether it's in drawing or writing or music or acting, whatever it is, use that power, baby. Because what you can create out of this would be far beyond your wildest dreams. It'd be bigger than what you can ever imagine. And I also want for you to not hold on to that pain of your past and allow it to consume you. It's okay to look at it. It's okay to acknowledge it. But don't sit in it. Don't dwell in it for too long. Use that pain and that use that pain for power and use it for something good. Make the best out of a bad situation. Turn that situation around into something positive. Flip that situation from a negative to a positive. Allow it to work in your favor with anything. Because I guarantee you, you will feel so much better and you will really heal yourself when you begin to take your power back and turn all of that pain into power and create something amazing and create something wonderful, something as wonderful as you. This is Terry Ann Bell, and I really hope that you enjoyed this podcast. I really hope that you enjoyed this listen. I hope that I have helped you. I hope that I have healed you. I hope that I have shifted your perspective in any way. Terry Ann Bell rings a bell. I love you. Terry Ann Bell signing out. <laughs>